everyone, welcome back to Art Impressions Watercolor Wednesday. This is Kendra Krebs bringing you this really fun little shopping street scene. <laughs> so today I'm going to show you how to put together these little cottages in a very simple way to make this little scene, okay? So this is, as you can see, quite a bit larger than our traditional card. Um, for those of you that have been with us a long time, I'm sure you've seen some requests for larger projects, and that's what I want to bring you today. So buckle up. This is probably going to be a little bit longer than the normal Watercolor Wednesday videos. Um, so if you're into that, please stick around and uh, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to grab this, uh, this page is about a nine inch by six inch. And I just feel, uh, this is about a half, a half a sheet. So I feel this is a nice size for this project. And then the little sets that I'm using are as follows. So obviously this is a bigger project, so I'm going to have more stamps that I'm using. So I'm going to use these three little stamps in the watercolor mini flower set. In the uh, watercolor chest of flower set, I'm going to use this leaf bunch, and I love this one. I use this one a lot. I think it's really versatile and so cute. Um, the watercolor large cabin set, and this is one of the new 2020 releases, and I'm going to be using this one. And then I'm going to be using both of these, as well as the espresso and the sweets sentiments, and this is the watercolor large shop set. And I am going to be using these little guys. Um, this is the watercolor wrought iron set. This tree right here from the watercolor tree set one. And of course our teeny tiny grass, which is used in many, many, many projects. So let's go ahead and get started with my large piece of paper here. And I am going to start with the little cottage on the left hand side. So that's going to be this one. And I'm going to grab number 969 and I'm just going to begin to color this. I'm not going to take a ton of time during this project to uh, go over shading and highlights and all of that good stuff. There are so many Watercolor Wednesday projects that highlight those, no pun intended. Um, and so I, I would definitely refer you to those videos. This one is just going to kind of show you how I get these um, little cabin or cottages to line up. So that's really the focus of this video. This one is 565 and we use this to kind of create a gray color and anytime you're doing um, a double tone like this you do want to stamp off just once just to get the excess off and then I will come in and stamp that down just like so and I'm going to take this off because I'm going to need that block and I'm going to take a little mask and put this that I pre-cut and I'm going to just put this right over the top like that so that on my next little um, cafe or um, the next little shop this one is going to be the sweet shop um, I'm not going to stamp right over that, okay? So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to color this using that 969. And I'm just going to put that ink all over. These Tombows are so juicy, so don't forget to stamp off when you're using, especially when you're using the two colors, one over the top, because you're just, you're distributing so much ink on these. If you stamp this down without stamping it off, it's going to be really, really dark, which is okay. I mean, that's also kind of um, a style, too, is having it really, really dark. But you can run into the issue of just too much ink for what you're doing. So stamp off once. And then I'm going to set this one back just a little bit, not too far. And I want to overlap it just a touch. Okay, so just like that. And then as you can see, when I pull this off, I will have that little shop behind there. Okay, and it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be enough that 
you have it kind of set back. It's obvious. So you don't want to go so far as to be covering the whole door or anything like that because it, then it kind of takes away. Um, but you do want to overlap it just a little bit just to give the idea that maybe there's a little path back there. Okay. And then I'm also going to now stamp the one on the right hand side. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. Once again, color this whole thing. And we'll get this colored with that 969. This one has lots of lines, so I wanna make sure I get it nice and good, nice and even there. And then again, that 565. And I'm going to just go over it like so. Stamp it off again. Once. And we will stamp this down kind of here. Okay, so you can see even that is just a touch darker um, than I like. So good thing I stamped it off because if I didn't, it would be really, really dark, right? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is basically color in these before I do anything else, because I want to have these pretty much done prior to putting in the flowers and the grass and all of that good stuff, including the trees and the sky. So I'm going to quickly just add in some color here. And this is so fun. These little cottages are such a blast because you could do a number of different color variations. You could do like a pink shop and a purple shop or, you know, you could make it really whimsical or really um, soft and you could do a bunch of neutrals if you wanted to. So this one is going to be the 228 and I'm going to use quite a bit of this. Um, I'll write the number 228. And this is kind of a gray green. It's so, so beautiful. And I'm just gonna put my little, um, my, the, the main one kind of up here because there are a lot of color um, variations in this. And I just wanna make sure that I'm keeping on track here because these are really fun to kind of change up. So if me personally, if I don't kind of keep track of where I'm going, I just, I start just having fun and putting colors wherever. <laughs> But when I'm teaching you guys, I definitely want to kind of stay on track so that you get a good idea of where I'm going with this. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is actually come in and just add in the areas that are going to be shadowed in or that will be brown. So for sure, in here, the little chimney is going to have some brown in between these rocks. I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in right now. So I'll take that and then I am also going to add just a little bit of a shadow underneath this awning. Anything that's underneath something is going to have a shadow. Okay, so like under here, there will be a little shadow. There will be a shadow under here, although it won't be huge. Okay, and then under my little ledges, my little, these are little uh, window boxes. And then on the step, I'll have a little bit of a shading there under the sign. And then just a touch under here as well. So I'm not doing a whole ton to that one, but I am going to do this to the other two as well. So I'll come in here and just start with the chimney again. And I'll add a little bit of water to the roof. Once again, this will be sh shadowed in on this side and a little bit here on the window, underneath the flower box, underneath the little awning here, on the door, on the little wall there, underneath here. Okay. Same thing on this side and my page is kind of turning, so <laughs> move this. I'm not used to working with a such a large canvas. So this has actually been really fun to come up with this idea for you guys and 
to kind of try some different things. If you check out that video um, when I was introducing these sets, I, I did show you another variation of this little um, shopping area and it has a different color variation than the one I'm sharing today. So if you want to kind of see that one, um, you can go check out that video and it's the one with the um, Art Impressions watercolor release. Okay, so um, another little shadow under here. There's going to be a little shadow in the doorway and on the stairs in the window and just a, t a touch there okay and then um my my roof my roofs i want to keep kind of a grayish brown so i am going to add this color to my palette as well um this is going to be the 969 and i'm going to put a little bit here as well because i'm going to want to mix the 565 so oops I actually was playing with this one earlier. And if you get um, colors mixing together and you don't want them to, you can just come on to a little paper and you see that I had brown in here and now it's back to blue. So, and I can use that paper actually to pull color off of if I want. So this is the 565 and I'm gonna put that blue here. And also, I'm going to put some of that blue here because I'm going to mix these two to make a gray. And this gray I will use a lot. So I'm just going to make it right now. And I'm going to mix mostly blue, actually, a little bit of brown. Um, I would say, like, not quite half and half. I would say a little bit more of the blue than the brown on this one. So I'm going to take the that little mixture and begin to put it into my rooftops and I don't want to fill these in completely I do want to leave some openness some white space um, it doesn't need to be perfect but I do want to leave some in here just because I, I tend to like things to be not fully colored in I like to be have some openness um, for the highlight and we'll just take a little bit more of that and pull that gray in and I also really like this gray roof too because of the green that I'm using that green is a really like grayish green almost like a sagey green color and I think it's so beautiful with this brownish gray um, rooftop color okay and now I'm going to take that same color and if I need to make more I can just grab blue from down here and grab a little bit of that brown and then I can begin to color in my rocks here and as you can see this is kind of a sped up version as far as the coloring goes um, if you are new to this and this is the first video you're watching, I would direct you back to one of the basics videos. Um, those are going to definitely teach you a lot more about how I'm doing what I'm doing. This project is, is something that you would do if you've been watercoloring for a little while and you're ready to kind of take it to the next step by sort of putting these little buildings together and everything. Um, if this is your first time doing this, this isn't the project that you want to start with because you need to learn how to do like the very, very basic um, parts of the watercoloring technique through Art Impressions that we teach. And you need to kind of practice with some of the foliage and the flowers and some of the more basic, simple concepts before you tackle something like this. And this isn't hard, It's that's definitely not what I'm saying, but there's going to be a lot of things that I do in here that may that you may not catch if you didn't kind of watch the previous videos. So definitely go watch those and then come back. <laughs> and then do a little bit of practice and then come back and um, pick up with this project, okay? So I'm gonna take this greenish gray and I'm gonna put these into the little flower boxes here. 
I love this green so much and it is so underused <laughs> and I need to use it more because it is just so beautiful. It's so soft and beautiful. I just love it. And then I'm going to take that same green and I'm going to go into the awning here and I'm going to go just across first like this. Do you see these lines right here and right here at the very ends? Those are the two lines that you want to follow when you're doing this little awning. And then you want to take those lines straight down. So you want to take that color, go across and then straight down. And that's what's going to give you that really cute kind of boutique-y um, color. And then I'm gonna start from the middle and come down. Start from the middle and come down. Start from the middle and come down. Same thing over here, okay? So I've got my little awnings there. And I'm going to take that same green and I'm gonna color up in here, this little top area. And as you can see, as I'm kind of moving along and you know, maybe some of you are picking this up, but when I choose my colors, I have a little bit of each color in each house, but it's in a different way. So the green on here was in the planters and then it's in the little awning here. And then now it's up in here into the top of this little cottage here. So I'm incorporating a lot of the same colors just in different ways in each one of these structures. And I'm just gonna bring in a little bit darker here just cause it's kind of up in the eaves a little bit. Notice I'm not worrying too much about that brown sort of bleeding down into it. I like that. So that's not something that I will fight. Okay. Now I'm going to take some of that same green and just put it into the flower pots or the little window boxes down in here in preparation for our flowers that will be coming very soon. Okay. Now I'm going to take uh, number 493, which is this really beautiful bright blue. Look at that. Look how amazingly bright that is. This is 493, uh, 493, yes. And I'm gonna mix just a little bit of this blue with a little bit of that green because I wanna tone it down a little bit. It's so bright. And I do want to kind of make it a little bit less bright and also a little bit more gray so that when I place it in here, it comes right in and fits really well instead of just being so bright that it takes over the whole um, piece. So when I put this blue down, you can see I'm following these two lines right here for that little um, awning, and then I'm gonna come straight down. But you can see that it's blue, but it's a little bit more cohesive to this. And um, let me show you actually the difference in this blue if I mix it and if I don't. So if I don't mix it, look how bright that is. And I, and I love it. This is just such a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, so that's the blue. And then if I mix just a little bit of that green in with it, it just tones it down a touch. Do you see that? It's just very, very small difference, but this is much more antique -y than this one. And that's really what I'm going for. So that's what that's why I mixed those two just a touch, okay? So I'm going to take this same color and I'm going to put it into the flower boxes of this little boutique. And then I'm also going to paint the door of this little cottage here. And see, once again, I put that same color in different in a different variation on the next cottage, okay? So this little door, I'm gonna paint um, kind of that gray color, just cause it's sort of in the background and um, I'm not gonna bring too much attention to this door back here, but I am going to color this door. I'll just do this one, the green again. And we'll just make that one really cute green. 
Okay, so now we are going to start putting in our trees in the background. Okay, so um, when I was making this one, I didn't cut <laughs> enough of, oops, so you can see my process here. I didn't cut enough of this guy. I wasn't thinking ahead. So I'm going to just kind of cut this chimney out so that when I place my tree, I will have a really nice mask to use. Okay, so here's this one. And I'm gonna take this little tree here and I'm just gonna use this top part because it's it's back like behind the little um, cottage and I want to just kind of have it peeking out. And I so then I don't need that that whole trunk, but I will take this piece and I will just kind of stamp one and maybe two, kind of like that. So it looks like a, li a little bit bigger. Um, okay, so I'll take that one off and you see, because I use the mask, now that tree is gonna be kind of seated um, behind. And then also I have this one for my next tree. And I'm gonna do kind of the same thing. I'm going to set it behind. And I'm just going to ink that little piece and we'll do one there and maybe one right there. And the branches or the little leaves that I do, those are gonna come up further. So although this feels kind of low, it won't be. And then I have one more <laughs> that I did for um, this tree right here. And that's about where I want it. Okay, so now I might use a little bit more of this trunk to bring that down. Maybe not the whole thing. Okay, so I might come like right there. And you can see a little bit of the trunk, not too much, and that's okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna take that off and look how cute. So we have our little trees back here and I'm gonna take that really cute little branch. Everything's like a little thing. <laughs> it's, it's true though, like it is little. Okay, I'm gonna take this branch and I'm gonna use number 177 and I'm gonna ink this. I don't need this little stem down here so I'm not gonna ink that, but I am going to begin to start stamping these into here. And we are stamping off, so you are stamping three or more times to get that dark and light variation. And I'm sorry, not three times, five times, five or more. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. And once you get that variation, you don't have to stamp five times every single time. You just want some light and some dark. And do you see how this is starting to kind of branch out more with the leaves? So although the tree wasn't that high, the leaves really take it quite a bit higher, huh? And I'm going to just kind of stamp these in. And I wanna bring this out and this kind of in here too. I want this nice and thick. It doesn't have to be too, too thick. Um, but I'm also gonna take the 249 and put a little bit of a variation into these leaves. So a little bit of that 249 is really, really nice because it just breaks up that green a little bit. And I'm not gonna stamp this everywhere, just some places. again just kind of stamp here and you can make these just really fun little scenes out of stamps okay let's get this out of the way 
All right, so now I have my branches in with my leaves. And I'm gonna come now in and just start dabbing these. So I'm just gonna dab. I'm not gonna take a lot of time on this. I just want most of these little leaves to be touched, not all of them. Not every single leaf needs to be um, kind of blurred or anything like that. Just, just most of them come in here and just touch them a little bit and move on. We do wanna keep the integrity of those branches for the most part, some of them, will kind of blend out and that's fine. Don't mind that at all. And just dabbing here. If you wanna know more about dabbing and the basics, definitely go watch that first basics video. And that's going to give you a really nice how to on how to do this. Dab, 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 dab. These are going to be much larger projects. Um, so don't expect these to take five minutes. These are definitely going to be longer. And, and you can see, I mean, we're already at, you know, over 25 minutes on just this piece because it's just these bigger ones just take a little bit longer to accomplish because they're just more, they're more involved, right? Which is really, really fun. Um, but you do need to have a little bit more time to do them, to kind of plan them out a little bit and all that good stuff. Okay, so now I have my trees in and I am going to just put a very small amount of um, uh, color into the um, shutters here before I put in the flowers. And I'm going to take that middle um, color, that gray, that I mixed in here. And I'm just gonna put these in. These are just gonna be little lines, just like this. And they're gonna go right across any of the windows that have shutters. So I think maybe this is the only one on here, but I think the other one in this set also has shutters, which I think are just the cutest. Okay, I'll put a little bit of this color on the doors. And then we will put in our flowers and foliage and finish up with some details in the windows and of course our little seating area. Are you still with me here? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take some of my little flowers. This is the little um, dot bunch and I'm gonna take 725. So this is the really bright pink and I'm just going to begin to stamp this in. Okay, and I'm stamping several times, right, to get that dark and light variation. Say it with me, multidimensionality. Ooh, multidimensionality, multi yes. I cannot speak tonight. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna keep going. Got some up here that I don't wanna forget about. And then maybe I'll put one over in here. And I'm not gonna do any pink in, in these flowers. I'm gonna let these kind of separate um, and have just pink on these two. And then I'm gonna do blue flowers in here. And that's because if you do every all the flowers the same on all of them, you're gonna lose some of that differentiation between the shops. So the flowers, I say, definitely change the flowers up a little bit. That's really fun to kind of um, give the shops a different appearance. And I'm going to take that same polka dot and I'm going to use that 493, that really bright blue, but I'm going to use it at full capacity. Um, and I'm not going to clean off that. I'm not going to clean off that pink before I use this. I'm just going to go ahead and go for it and let the colors mix a little bit. And I'm going to definitely put this blue in here. I love this blue so much, it's beautiful. And I'm doing these, just these really cute little clusters. And I'll put some in here. Maybe I'll do just a blue one in here. And a little blue in there. Okay, 
Now I'm going to take my next flower and I'm going to do another blue. So this is 528 and this is the same color I'm going to be using for my sky. So this is definitely a blue that will be tied in as well. And I like putting blues next to each other, especially when there's a more um, subtle blue and a really bright blue. I think it's just gorgeous. So I'm going to do some of these here. We'll keep this pot blue. And I'm not going to put any of these on this side. Okay. Let's put in our green foliage using the 177. And this is that really cute, just teeny tiny one. And I just take this and put these kind of wherever. You really don't need to be, I mean, that's honestly the beauty of this is you really don't need to have anything anywhere specific other than when you're doing your structure, your structures or your perspective. Um, it is kind of important to have a, a little bit of a plan, kind of like what we did, you know, when I had my masks um, all prepared to be able to put these together. That's really the only preparation that you need and to kind of know um, how far in or, you know, how far you want to go. It's just something you can kind of think about prior to doing that. So, okay, now we have our flowers in and I'm just going to begin to dab these and I'm going to do all the pink first. So I'm going to come in. Oops, I forgot some greenery up there. So I'm going to have to come back <laughs> and I'm just going to quickly add that right now. That top little basket, this little flower um, basket, I forget. I forget this one up here. <laughs> and every time that I'm coloring stuff in, I'm like, oh, I mean, sometimes I just leave it blank because I completely forget. So remember all of your baskets. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the green now since I started touching that one next. There's no order in which you have to move from like pink to purple or blue or anything like that. Um, you just choose a color and stick with that color all the way through and then you can choose another color. So now I'll go in with the blues and here's these and these two blues I'll just go ahead and touch all of them because I do want them to blend a little bit. And then these blues here, just like that. How cute is that? So we have all of our little flower pots um, filled in now. And I'm going to go ahead and begin putting in our um, windows now. So I'm gonna use the 565, this blue. And I'm just going to begin to put in the window panes. So these are really sweet. You don't need to be perfect, but these are gonna be little squares or little kind of squares. <laughs> I never get these perfect. So don't feel like it's something you need to do. There are ways to get them perfect if you wanna use like sticker paper or something like that, but, but please don't go to that trouble. This really, this really does not need to be perfect. You just kind of get these in for the idea and the feel of the little panes. And I'm gonna put these here, okay? And then in this window up here, I'm just going to kind of fill this in a little bit as much as I can without it getting into my flowers. And then I'll do the same for this little window here and because my flowers are so high, I am just going to kind of bring that window pane down or that little window down. I had in the original, um, these were kind of squared as well, but because my flowers and foliage are so high, um, I have to modify that and that's totally fine. Okay. Now for this one, I am going to do three little squares down and these are larger panes that I'm doing and I can't go further than that and that's fine because of my flowers. So we'll go one, two, three on that one. And then I do have a window up in here as well. All right, so now I'm gonna come back in and just put a few little shadows 
um, some darker shadows in here, just some areas where I feel like they could be a little bit darker just to kind of offset this and um, give us some deeper colors. Here's my little tree trunk. I forgot to fill in. And then I'll come in and, and um, go over some of these as well with that really fine um, detail tip at the very end. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in there. It's kind of something, something really simple like that, okay? Now I can take my little words, and for this one, um, this one says sweets, and I'm gonna use the 969. And I'm going to just stamp sweets right into the top here. And this comes in the set. Isn't that cute? I just love these. I love these. This one says espresso. And I'm going to stamp that one if I can see correctly. Uh, we'll see. Oh, good enough. Okay. So that one is espresso and that's our little coffee shop. And of course, these can be switched out if you want to. You can you can put whatever anywhere. Um, okay, now I'm going to take just a little bit of that color, that same color, and just put that into my steps here. It's really easy to kind of as you're as you're moving along, be like, oh, I forgot this spot. Oh, I forgot this spot because there's so many little areas that you can color. <laughs> Um, you will find yourself doing that. As you're kind of moving through here, you'll be like, oh, I totally missed this area. So I, I definitely want to, you know, add some color while you're there. Go ahead and do that. All right. Now I'm going to put in a little bit of a trail, just kind of connecting these a touch. This one is not going to be connected because it is kind of um, sat a little bit forward, but these two will be connected and I'll use that 969 and I'm just going to take a little bit of that 969 and just kind of bring it around just kind of like this and I'm using um, just a, a straight stroke here. Nothing too crazy. I do want to make sure I have enough water on my brush so that when I do this it's going to um, move the color enough and I will take a little bit more here and then also a little bit more here so that we do know that these are connected, but I'm not going to put brown on this whole thing. Our eyes can say like, I know that these are connected by some kind of walkway. I don't need to make that, you know, every little area um, colored in to, to, um, sort of confirm that because our eyes do that for us without even realizing it. Okay, so I'm gonna put just a little bit of brown here on that horizon line because I'm gonna put some grass back there. All right. Now, are you are we still together here? <laughs> I'm gonna let that dry and I am gonna put a little bit of the 528. I know my OGs are with me right now. Okay, so I'm going to do the 528 and um, I am going to just kind of add this blue and just very lightly start dabbing the sky in, okay? So we're going to dab the sky kind of around the trees. All right. Are you with me? Katie, are you with me, girl? Okay. So Katie, you know what? You are such an awesome fan. And I chatted with your mom on Facebook and this is directed to Katie Bremer West. And I hope I, I hope I pronounced that correctly, but your mom is so proud of you. And I am so grateful that you watch my videos. She told me that you watch my videos and she showed me your amazing work on Facebook. And I just want to say, girl, you are so talented and I feel so privileged that you watch my videos and that I can teach you something. That makes me 
so incredibly happy. You have no idea. Um, it's people like you that make me absolutely love my job and want to come back and do this again and again and again. So thank you so, so, so much, Katie, for watching. And of course, to everybody else um, for coming in and supporting me and just having the sweetest things to say, <laughs> you guys just make me smile and you make this so worth it, you know, to come up with new projects and to, um, to have something, you know, new for you guys. It really compels me to want to do something fun and new and, and different. And, and I, I want to thank you guys for all, um, that you do and all the support that you always give to us. Um, you know, this, this would not be the same without you. So, um, yes, I, I, Katie, I told your mom, I wanted to give you a little shout out in my video because of, um, how much I appreciate you. So thank you so, so much, girl. All right. So I am just going to continue adding this blue into the top here. And I'm not going too high, but I do want to add some because this is quite large, right? So I, I do want to kind of bring this in a little bit. And I feel like the sky does a really great job um, doing that. Okay, now let's put in our grass. And I am going to put in my little teeny tiny grass here on my little tiny acrylic block. And I'm going to use 177. So I'm going to take my little grass and I'm gonna put this on the left and then again on the right. And these little grass um, clumps, these are just to kind of support the base of these little structures and they ground them. So you can put that brown in, but then when you put the grass in, it really grounds in that structure and makes it look like it's been there a long time. This is where it belongs. It ages it. It's just, it's just a nice little touch. So I'm going to put these little clumps in here on each side. I'm going to come over here, do the same thing. And notice I'm stamping several times before I re-ink. Okay. Now I've got my grass in and I'm going to take my brush and just start pulling this grass out. And I'm going to go right over the top of the coloring of the structure because grass is going to grow in front of these. Like it's not going to, it's not going to avoid the little cottages and things. It's going to grow right over the top. It's going to create, it's going to cast shadows. So feel free to just carry that grass all the way on up and over the brown, even on the ground, wherever you want to put this grass is totally fine. That's why it's one of my favorites is because it's so versatile. Okay, so now we're going to put in our little seating area and this is just so cute so this is in that wrought iron um set and i'm going to set this back i had it more forward um in the other one i'm going to set this back just a little bit um kind of back in here and i'm going to have the table there and then i'm going to put the little chairs back here too so I have my one chair right there. Oops, I put him on the, <laughs> the wrong side. <laughs> I put him on the wrong side. That's okay. I'll just stamp him again and put him over here. And who cares? Okay, you guys. So somebody, actually, I like this chair like that because someone stood up and forgot to put the chair back in. So it's facing this way. You know those people who like stand up and they don't. Um, push the chair back in. That was a, that was one of those customers. So this is what I do when I um, <laughs> something doesn't quite go as planned. I make up a story and I'm like, oh, well, this is what happened. <laughs> and it always kind of works out for me. 
Okay, so I'm going to put these little stones down here, and we all know me. I love to have just these little, um, these little stipple dots. I think they're really fun to kind of put these in wherever, all around. And then, of course, you want to sign your work. And this is frameable art, so make sure that you sign it. I hope you enjoyed this very long-winded tutorial, and I hope that you gained something from it. If you make this, definitely tag us. Um, you know, come say hi, tag us on social media, follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Um, make sure you leave a comment. If there was something you especially liked, um, of course, if you have suggestions for us, we always welcome those in the comments as well. And thanks for joining us, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.